Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going once again? I'm from Navstack Bits today, and we want to be checking out this. No, Colonel! This uh, TP Link AX3000 unit. Uh, the AX, of course, is Wi Fi 6. Uh, AC is Wi Fi 5. Wi Fi N is Wi Fi 4. And this is supposed to be one of the biggest, newest, most powerful units of TP Link, ladies and gentlemen. So we open it up. I like the packaging because it is very recyclable. Mm, this unit definitely seems longer than the other TP-Link units. I have, oh, that can come off very nicely. I have two other TP-Link TP units, the AX1500 and the AX1800. So I'll be able to compare them together and see how they are. Or alternatively, maybe I can combine them like a Transformers combiner. Ooh, they're actually really advertising. The Intel there, check it out. Yeah, Intel all the way, right? Anyways, anyways, so we have all the cards we need that have the passwords and all that fun stuff. We have the power here, different kind of brick than the other ones. I believe this was the first unit that came out like this. On the back, you notice we have five ports. That's where you put your internet, and that's where you put all your other stuff. Power goes in here, on off button, USB 3.0 for local storage. WPS, Wi-Fi button, reset, and the LED light if you want to turn the LED lights on here, on or off. Okay, so nah, I was wrong. Here's the 1800, here's the uh, 3000. It looks like the cases are both the exact same thing, except... No, 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 they're not. They're definitely, they're definitely different. Now, to set this thing up, you're going to want the Tether app. You open it up, you can get this on Android, iOS, all that fun stuff. You load it up, you log into your particular unit that you're using, and then you go through a setup, very basic. Here it'll actually show you all the clients that are connected. Uh, I only have this one unit. But what's interesting, and this one that I haven't seen with the other units, is we have this home care section. Of course, we always had parental control and the, and the quality of service, but I don't recall seeing the home care center in, uh, in the 1500 or the 1800. So that seems to be one big difference. Next up, let's take a look at the Wi-Fi ranges and see exactly where uh, my router, which is router McRouter face, has decided to put itself. And it is in business for itself. I think I've seen this with other TP-Link units too. Okay, so your fault, D-Link A120 in Irvin is all within the same channel list, which is good. Um, however, router McRouter face is out for itself. It wants all of the bands. Now you see band 4 through 12. If you have more bands, it means that you can do more, that you can push more information. But some units that you hook onto your Wi-Fi can only do certain bands. And if your router tries to communicate it over different bands, it's just not going to work. You're not going to have a good time. This is the 2.4G. Now let's check the 5. Looks like it's all the way over here. Yeah, you know, why didn't it put itself down here? There's lots of space right here, but at least it's within the same band as uh, these two other units. So that part ain't so bad, but uh, at the 2.4G, yeah, it's definitely 100% just out for itself. Next up, let's do a speed test. All right, so here's a neat little paid utility that I like to use to test not just internet speed, but the Wi-Fi speed. So on the left, in the middle, you'll see that I get 11 megabits upload and download about 150, and that's normal for my location. But what's interesting is uh, just under that latency unit in the middle, you'll see Wi-Fi speed uh, upload 301. It's not too bad. That's not too bad. Too bad it wouldn't tell me the download also i guess i'll have to test that manually though all right folks now's the time for the moment of truth we're going to find out just how fast this unit can transfer over here on the left hand side i got my alexandrian backup that's the place where i save all of my data where i hoard all of my data over here on the right hand side i have my workstation that's where i do all my heavy lifting and my video creation i'm going to transfer directly from one to the other the router You'll have to excuse the mess, is right there. It's right there, line of sight, it's got connection. With this, we will be able to test the top speed of this unit with one big file. So, let's see how it transfers. So, so far at best, it looks like I can get about 40 megabytes a second, which isn't too bad, I've gotten worse. 
Now, this is what I expect from most AX units, but AX promises the world it's supposed to be so much faster than this. Why is the baseline actually so low? Okay, it just moved up to uh, 43 megabytes there, I should say. But, uh, somebody said that it was because of the hard drives, the speed of the hard drives, but I tested that speed, and those things are definitely over uh, 60 megabytes a second, system to system. I understand there is some overhead, but I don't think it should be 50%. Now, here's another slightly confusing part. Over here it says that the speed is 1.1 gigabits per second, and over here it's about the same. So what I'm saying is I should still be able to get 120 megabytes transfer a second because uh, that's what one one gigabit divided by eight, right? Now this is a test that everyone wants to see on a router review. This is just my internet speed, but everybody likes to see the speedtest.net result. Once again, this is just your internet speed. This isn't what your computer network is capable of. Now, before we kick off this next test, I want to take a second and assure absolutely everybody that uh, both of my computers are both using name brand AX Wi-Fi 6 cards, so I expect Wi-Fi 6 speed and capability off these girls. Next up, I have hardwired Alex, so she should be at least twice the speed, I believe. Okay, so yeah, definitely hardwired in. I'm definitely getting twice the speed on this thing, which seems to be about what happens when you're dealing with wireless, or particularly Wi-Fi AX. Nice! Almost 100 megabytes a second. Getting there, getting there. I guess the moral of this story is always make sure that your server is hardwired. So during these tests, and particularly during this transfer, I've noticed that this thing's actually getting pretty warm. Maybe she just needs to take it off. But seriously, I hate taking these things off. As soon as I get a fingerprint on there, it's not coming off, basically. It's there unless I take rubbing alcohol or Windex to it or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to take Windex to something like this with all these speed vents in it. Of course, we got to get the stereotypical Predator Vision ghost hunting shot. Either this thing's really haunted or it's running just a little bit warm. Next up, let's do a benchmark test of the USB 3.0 port in the back. It should be said that this isn't your standard USB 3.1. This is actually an M.2 card connected up. I can transfer about 300 megabytes a second with the test file. Let's see how fast it can actually transfer. This is the speed test for the USB 3.0 on the side of the unit. I'm only getting about 20 megabytes a second. I was expecting 30. So yeah, it's not the fastest USB 3.0 ever, but does anyone actually use the network attached storage on these things? It is really cool though how it just pops up right here in the network area. So if you want to get to this, what you need to do is you need to you need to log into your router. You need to come to 192.168.whatever.whatever. .whatever. .whatever. It automatically set itself as .1.1 for me. Come over to the USB sharing area and see what I did is I just enabled. Whoop. Anyways, just enable your uh, access method. If you set up a uh, network neighborhood, it will show up there in your network. And then you just have to click, tell it which drives, what part of the drives you want to share. You're, usually there's only one part of the drive anyone's worried about. But yeah, that's neat. Just come on down to TP Share, And then there we have the drives. Just like that. This is the, the Windows install drive that I have where I save the test video to. Alright, in all seriousness, this is the fastest AX unit that I've reviewed so far. Uh, up until now, I haven't found anything that could break the 30 megabyte barrier. I could get 30 megabytes off of other AC units, but off no other AX unit could I get this kind of speed. 42 megabytes a second. Hey, that's great. Of course, these things advertise the thing gets so much more, but you're never actually going to get that. Maybe, except not for like a really long time from now. The AC units have been around forever. The AX units are just coming out. Intel's developing them, and they're just not as fast as they should be. So I gotta say, once again, this is the fastest unit that I've gotten. There is a new update out for, I think it's 1.9, or maybe it's 1.0.9. 
It should be said, before I reviewed this, I reviewed the AX 1800 and the 1500, and I got a lot of people complaining about this particular unit, saying that it uh, it didn't do good, it, it, it got too hot, which I'm not finding, and that it didn't work on gigabit inter internet too well. But I'm not seeing that right now. However, there's one thing a lot of reviewers don't actually do for you, and that's review it over a period of time. It's one thing to get something and to try it out. It's another thing to get something and to have it for a while and see how long it lasts. But at the same time, you never buy the first of anything. And it really seems like the AX3000 was the first AX unit brought out by TP-Link and perhaps it fell victim to that thing where you should never buy, you should never buy anything that's the first out. I believe that was the first out. And this seems like it's upgraded and it seems like it's better. I'm not having any problems with it. I'm throwing my tests at it and it seems to be pretty good. So I gotta give this thing a seal of approval, ladies and gentlemen. I'm liking this thing. Once again, fastest internet transfer that I've had so far. If I have any problems with it, I'll let you guys know. But uh, for now, I'm calling it. This is the best dang thing I've had. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, like and subscribe if you like this stuff. It's always appreciated. And as always, folks, take care of each other, will yous?